so quietly, please. And the next item of business is Members' Business Debate on Motion 9621 in the name of Tom Arthur on Carer Positive Employer Initiative. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons. I call on Tom Arthur to open the debate. Around seven minutes, please, Mr Arthur. Thank you, presiding officer. Um, as MSPs, we regularly have the privilege of meeting an extraordinary range of individuals, groups and organisations. Amongst the many who make up the rich fabric of our society, there are certain groups and individuals who to me is, for me, and I imagine for all of us, a humbling experience. Those who serve in our fire, police and other emergency services, our forces and veterans community, those who work in the front line of our health and social care services, and our unpaid carers. Presiding officer, carers make up 17% of the adult population of Scotland, and it is estimated that 4% of those under 16 are unpaid carers. The diversity of Scotland's population is equally reflected in the diversity of our carers' community. The student who balances school while caring for her mum, the elderly husband who meticulously and selflessly organises his wife's self-directed support, the single mother raising three children who each have additional support needs. These are but a handful of the experiences shared by the 788,000 people in Scotland who are caring for a relative, friend or neighbour. Each one of those carers makes a profound impact upon the lives of those that they support. In doing so, carers make a massive contribution towards the delivery of care in Scotland. The value of the care provided by unpaid carers equates to some £10.3 billion per year. To put that into context, that is an amount equivalent to almost 80% of our NHS budget. This is being provided by barely 15% of the population. To put it simply, society as we know it can only function because of the selfless dedication of unpaid carers. The care that they provide is irreplaceable. However, presiding officer, as well as providing care, many carers also make a significant contribution to Scotland's broader workforce across a range of professions. It is estimated that more than one third of carers combine care with work, with the 270,000 working carers comprising more than 10% of the entire working population of Scotland. With the total number of carers in Scotland expected to reach 1 million within the next 20 years, it's clear that our working carers are going to become an increasingly important part of Scotland's overall workforce. This is why it is vital that our workplace environments are supportive and understanding of the needs of carers not just for the carers of today and tomorrow, but also for Scotland's wider economy. The Carer Positive Initiative both recognises and assists employers who seek to provide a supportive and understanding environment for those employees who are carers. This support can take many forms, such as telephone access, health and wellbeing support, leave arrangements and flexible working. Small differences can have a huge impact. However, without the right type of support in the workplace, Working carers are at risk of stress, burnout, and even leaving employment altogether. This, of course, can have a significantly detrimental impact on both the carer and the people who they care for. However, it can also have a very negative impact for the employer who loses a skilled member of staff. However, with the right support, employers are able to retain carers. This can lead to reduced absence, lower levels of staff turnover, and an overall reduction in recruitment costs. And the good news is that all organisations, regardless of size or structure, can become carer positive. So, President Officer, how does an organisation... Certainly. Ruth McGuire. I thank um, Tom Arthur for taking the intervention. I wonder if you would agree with me that um, if employers don't provide flexible, um, carer-friendly workplaces, that they're actually missing out on a huge pool of talent. It's not just about supporting people, it's about accessing the talent and skills of folk who have caring responsibilities. Tom Arthur. I absolutely agree with my colleague, and I will illustrate some of that later on in my remarks. But as I was going to say, presiding officer, the question is how does one, a, an employer of an organisation become carer positive? Well, it's actually very simple. It's really just about fulfilling five fairly basic criteria. These are one, that there is a good understanding of the meaning of the term carer, and that measures are in place that allow for the identification of carers, including support to self-identify for those who may not be aware that they are carers. Two, that they are recognised carer policies or procedures. Three, 
There is workplace support for policies, procedure and support are effectively communicated to all staff. And five, that carers are supported to engage with other carers. Once an employer achieves carer positive status, organisations can then progress through three levels, moving from engaged to established and finally to exemplary. The ways in which the criteria are met and progression achieved will, of course, vary between organisations, reflecting their different sizes and structures. This flexibility allows employers and carers to work together in the design and implementation of policies and procedures within the workplace that work for them. Presiding officer, the carer positive scheme is designed so that all organisations will be able to meet the criteria. And there are now over 90 carer positive employers across the length and breadth of Scotland covering close to 300,000 employees. <coughs> carer positive employers can be found in a range of sectors, including financial services, energy, food and drink, charities and social enterprises, local authorities, health boards, colleges and universities, Scottish and UK government agencies, and even MSPs, not to mention the Scottish Parliament, of course, and the Scottish Government. This means there is now a solid evidence base highlighting the advantages of Carer Positive and a wide range of examples of best practice and how to achieve accreditation and progress. Before concluding, President Officer, I do wish to place on record my thanks to members of the Greens, Labour and Liberal Democrats, as well as my own SNP colleagues who have supported the motion today. I would also like to express my gratitude to Carers Scotland, in particular to Simon Hodgson, Sue McClintock and Fiona Colley, who are in the gallery, for their support um, ahead of this debate. I am pleased to advise members that I will be hosting a drop-in session with Simon, Sue and Fiona between two and four this afternoon in committee room three. And I would encourage members to spare five minutes to take this opportunity to drop in and learn how they can promote the Carer Positive Scheme to organisations in their own constituencies and regions, and importantly, learn, to, learn how to become Carer Positive employers themselves. Presiding officer, three in five of us will become carers at some point in our lives. Carer Positive is an initiative that is relevant to all of us. It benefits both working carers and employers, supporting and enabling working carers to gain and retain employment, and it contributes towards inclusive growth. It is a scheme that deserves the widest possible uptake. And I look to forward to seeing more organisations and MSPs becoming carer positive employers. Thank you. We now move to the open debate and speeches of around four minutes, please. And I call Jamie Halker Johnson to be followed by Kezia Dugdale. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and I congratulate Tom Arthur on bringing this um, debate to the Chamber today. Uh, Care Positive is an initiative I hope members from across the political, the political spectrum can get behind. It has been incredibly welcome to see a greater focus on the needs and challenges that carers face across, uh, from across um, all of the parties in recent years. The motion before us today highlights the economic value of carers and the work that they do. This cannot be stated enough when we consider the provision that is made for carers directly through the state as well as through initiatives like this. To focus on my own region briefly, the last census found well over 40,000 people involved in administering, uh, administering unpaid care, a significant proportion providing over 50 hours a week uh, of care a week. This is likely to be an, an, actually an, 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 an estimate of the actual true fact. In some ways, our region is typical, but it's not difficult to imagine the extra strain that sometimes distant essential services can cause. It is equally easy to predict that care would be far more difficult for the public sector to deliver to people in community settings in areas like the Highlands and Islands. So I pray tribute to the great many carers from across the Highlands and Islands, and indeed across Scotland. When we present figures, they can often mask the thousands upon thousands of individual situations which they represent the range and diversity of people who are in employment and yet undertake often extensive caring responsibilities. Each is unique, but many of the stresses and the strains are shared and unfortunately commonplace. When employers support carers within their organization, it provides a benefit not only to them and the carer, but the person receiving care and the wider society too. And I'd echo the point that Ruth, Dave, uh, Ruth uh, Maguire made there in terms of being able to access a great a pool of talent uh, within the caring community. Caring for carers is in all of our interests and is rightly a key aspiration for parties across this chamber. The law mandates a, number, the mandates a number of employment rights that can be enjoyed by carers, including significantly the right to request flexible working, the right to time off in an emergency, and the provisions in the Equality Act 2010 to guard against discrimination. 
However, there remain a range of steps that employers can undertake voluntarily to make their organizations even more accessible, inclusive, and welcoming to people with caring responsibilities. This is where Care Positive comes in. Much of what is needed is raising awareness. Often caring responsibilities can be hidden, with people's home and work lives kept separate. However, there always remain circumstances where the two clash. This is why it is positive that businesses maintain policies and procedures that ensure where this occurs, that support is in place. I note from some of the published material that most of the existing awarded organizations under the scheme are public sector or third sector bodies. This includes, I'm pleased to say, this parliament itself, having received its recognized status back in February of last year. And I would ask the Minister today if it may be possible to outline what the Scottish Government can do to encourage the uptake of the initiative amongst private sector companies, uh, the private sector companies with which the Government has regular dealings. It would also be interesting to know how many businesses are currently working with Care Positive with a view to becoming awarded bodies at present. So once again, I welcome this initiative and the work undertaken by Carers Scotland, and I would encourage the Scottish Government to look at where it can build on the connections and what influence it has to embed career positive attitudes among employers across the length and breadth of Scotland. Thank you. I call Kezia Dugdale to be followed by Graeme Day. Thank you, President Officer, and can I congratulate Tom Arthur on securing this debate. Uh, I consider Tom a friend, so I always like to follow his work, but I also participate in this debate this afternoon as a forthcoming new member of the Economy and Fair Work Committee, of which this is what we're fundamentally debating, the role of carers in the economy and their ability to access um, fair work. So it's worth repeating some of the uh, economic statistics. We know that carers contribute £10.8 billion to our economy. We know that one in seven uh, workers in Scotland have some sort of caring responsibilities. Yet, as we heard from Tom Arthur, currently only around 287,000 employees are actually uh, working for companies that are covered by the Carer Positive Scheme. So there's a tremendous amount more uh, work and progress that we can make in this regard. And I have to confess, President Officer, I hadn't heard about this scheme until I uh, noticed Tom's uh, debate today. So everything I've learned about it, I've learned in the past few days. And the similarities, I think, are really striking with the living wage accreditation scheme, especially when you look at the benefits to the economy. Much of the argument around the living wage was made around the fact that it would reduce uh, absenteeism, it would reduce the turnover of staff within organisations, and it would drive up productivity rates. Those are all arguments for the Cater Positive Scheme. And I actually think it's worth remembering that one of the best advocates for the living wage in the early days was a private company, just to pick up on the point made by Jamie Halcrow Johnson, it was PricewaterhouseCoopers, who uh, were one of the first major private sector employers to adopt the living wage because they believed it was good business sense. And I think there are many ways in which we can pro progress the case for expanding the Care Positive scheme uh, in that regard. In order to become a carer positive organisation, you need to be able to do five key things. You need to be able to identify carers within your organisation. You need to make sure that your HR policy uh, reflects and, uh, and mentions carers. You need to provide various workplace support. You need to increase your communication awareness and training around carers. You need to have various mechanisms of peer support in place. And as we've heard from Tom Arthur, there are three different scales at which employers can operate, uh, starting from being engaged, then to established, and then exemplary employers with regards to the Care Positive Scheme. So I had to have a look at, uh, in Edinburgh, the area that I seek to represent, what uh, organisations, what employers were currently Care Positive approved. And I was delighted to see that in that first stage, in the engaged category, there's Edinburgh City Council, uh, there is indeed the Parliament itself, uh, and the University of Edinburgh. When you work your way up to who the established carer positive organisations are, uh, NHS Lothian, uh, Standard Life, who were also a, a great champion of the living wage in the early days, and the Scottish Government appear in that second category. And then finally, in the exemplary category, there aren't as many organisations as I think we'd like to see, but there's the big... Uh, energy company Centrica who have their headquarter functions here in Edinburgh. So having only just learnt about this scheme, I will endeavour as a Lothian's MSP to do everything I can to promote the scheme and contact uh, uh, employers uh, large and small across the Lothian's region to see what I can do to encourage them to participate in the scheme. 
Equally, I am a living wage accredited employer as an MSP. I will uh, now, after Tom's challenge, make sure that my office as an MSP is also carer positive, and I'll start those steps uh, this week. But just finally, presiding officer, I think it's worth recognising that whilst we know carers make a tremendous contribution to the economy as employees, there are many carers who can't work, who desperately want to work. And I'm mindful of a young man who came to my surgery back in October who is desperate to work but just can't find an employer who's willing to cope uh, or deal with the reality of his living circumstances. So we'll get this right when that young man is in the workplace and I'll continue to do my bit to make sure that happens. Thank you. I call Graham Day to be followed by Jeremy Balfour. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I, for two very specific reasons, thank my colleague Tom Arthur for bringing this motion forward for debate. Firstly, Care or Positive is a great initiative which we should be celebrating and promoting. And secondly, it affords me the chance at the conclusion of this debate to meet with Sue McClintock and Simon Hoskin from Care or Positive and collect my Care or Positive certificate as my office has joined Tom's as being accredited as carer positive. I'm delighted to be the second MSP to be accredited. I'd be even more delighted if he hadn't beat me to be in first, mind you, not that I'm competitive, you understand. But it's only right that Tom and I are backing up words with actions, and it's right and proper that this Scottish Parliament is doing that as well. Members may recall that in February last year, I hosted an event here at Holyrood to showcase the initiative at which the Parliament itself was presented with its carer positive engaged uh, level accreditation. The Parliament demonstrated, has demonstrated that it has in place a number of policies which support staff with caring responsibilities. In regular development conversations with staff, line managers are encouraged to ask about well-being and any support that staff member needs. Support resources are available to staff, including trained counsellors who can provide expert emotional guidance. The Human Resources Office also raises with external organisations such as Vocal, which supports carers in Edinburgh and the Lothians. And I'm pleased to learn that further steps are planned for this year. A carer staff network, which will be open to all building users, is in the process of being set up here. This will provide a space for carers to share their experiences and assist the organisations in developing uh, its understanding of the needs of staff with caring responsibilities. Once the network is set up, the Parliament will work towards the exemplary level of the award in 2018. I hope members will join me in acknowledging the efforts of Anila McKenna and Philippa Booth, who, along with other members of the Parliament staff, are delivering that. More than that, though, I hope they themselves will commit, as Kezia Dugdale has, to joining this initiative, because as MSPs, we ought to be leading by example. Presiding officer, let me be honest here. Whilst I've always supported this initiative, I've previously voiced concern about the challenges facing very small offices and businesses in becoming carer-positive environments. Those concerns made me hesitate before taking this step. There are some circumstances in which, as a very much outward public serving setup, I thought an MSP's office could find itself conflicted. But it readily became apparent, apparent that through common sense, sense, cooperation and dialogue, you can almost, almost find a way. Interestingly, of the now 90 carer positive employers in Scotland, 28 are defined as small employers, i.e. those with fewer than 50 employees. Though admittedly a large number of the small employers work within the carers or voluntary sector, but the, the list also includes public sector organisations such as the Scottish Roads Works Commissioners uh, and private companies like Moan Aqua UK Limited and Intraweight Limited. Being a small organisation does create challenges, but as Sue McClintock at Carer Positive has not designed a one-size-fits-all scheme. Being accommodating doesn't mean you be unable to provide a proper level of service to your customers or constituents. And at the heart of this, the key point is communication and flexibility, cutting both ways, the same of which can be said of the benefits. The results of a carer employee survey recently found that 92% of participating organisations saw better staff retention. 88% experienced lower absence rates, 61% witnessed improved recruitment, 69% observed higher productivity. And there's a hard cash illustration of the benefit to employers, the wider economy and the public purse too. Centrica, one of the five employers to receive Carer Positive's highest status and one of the founding members of Carers for Employers, estimates that the direct cost to an employer of losing a working carer is between 100 and 150 per cent of their annual salary. Across the UK, this amounts to the cost of around £1.3 billion a year to the economy, and when lost tax revenue and additional benefit payments are taken into account, this rises to £5.3 billion annually. In other words, there's a solid financial as well as moral case for pursuing carer-positive policies. Presiding officer. 
And the last of the open debate contributions is from Jeremy Balfour. Uh, thank you, Deputy President Officer. And I would also like to thank uh, Tom Offer for bringing forward this important debate. Unpaid carers are unsung heroes. As of June 2017, as we've already heard, there was an estimated 788,000 unpaid carers in Scotland who make a massive contribution to reducing the burden on the NHS social care system and rely on friends, neighbours and relatives. In fact, Deputy President Officer, if it wasn't for uh, a carer today, I wouldn't be standing here because I need help getting dressed every morning. Unpaid, done voluntary. In our role as MSPs, we will have all met with carers who tell you that it can be a positive and rewarding experience to know that you're helping someone else. But we will also tell you that to help a husband, a wife, a partner, a child comes and can often be difficult and upsetting. It can lead to greater stress, worry, isolation, depression, anger, guilt, the blurring of boundaries. Am I a carer or am I a father? Am I a carer or am I a husband? And caring can also put a strain on financial, uh, has a financial pressure as well. Often you have to cut down in your work, juggle work, cut out things that you like doing, perhaps in regard to sport or other activities. Supporting carers to manage the sometimes difficult job of balancing work with caring responsibilities can deliver real benefits to employers as well as helping individuals and their families. The Carer Positive Employer aims to encourage employers to create a supportive working environment for carers in the workplace. And I welcome the wide range of employers who, have, who were consulted before this came forward. A strong partnership between public and private, between voluntary, and I hope it will have a lasting success across Scotland. Because employers supporting the initiative recognise that in addition to being good employment and by supporting the employer, employees, it also gives them benefit as well. Because often if you lose a care from a workforce, you damage not only that individual and that family, but you damage that company or that organisation. An example of this is the Scottish Court Service, who recognises the need to retain staff who are skilled and experienced, providing help through their carers' policy and acknowledge that achieving a good work-life balance makes sense for everybody. I hope the Carers Scotland Act 2016, which will come into effect on 1st April, will again help people be uh, supported in what they do. Carer Positive is a win-win-win. Uh, again, uh, like uh, Kedja Dugdall, I have to confess, did not know a lot about this scheme until uh, Tom Arthur's motion came up. And I hope uh, later on this afternoon to, to visit uh, the session that he's holding and to look as uh, an employee, employer to bring this forward in my workforce. And I hope other organisations will do the same and other MSPs will do the, will do the same. So I welcome this award and hope we can continue to develop similar initiatives that take connoisseurs of population changes, provide practical solutions for support, and recognise, most, important, most importantly, the contribution made by carers. Thank you, Deputy President Officer. We do, in fact, have another contribution in the open debate. Fulton McGregor. Thank you, President Officer, and uh, my apologies uh, to yourself in the Chamber. I hadn't actually intended to speak, but I, I pressed uh, my button, so thank you for letting me in. And I'll also make a declaration that I am the uh, Parliamentary Liaison Officer to the Health Secretary. I want to thank Tom Arthur for bringing the debate to the Chamber and also pay tribute to Fiona Foley and others in the gallery who I know have done uh, fantastic work in this. Uh, as, as I said, I didn't um, intend to speak, but uh, you know, when I heard the debate progressing, I decided that, that I, I would chip in. My own experience, I was remembered of 
my own experience, and I thought about carers in the context of not maybe just being a carer once in their life, but maybe that carers would be in and out of that position. And I thought of myself as a, a young 18-year-old, and through my, my early 20s, they uh, helped me as a family unit, caring for my gran, who um, unfortunately passed away in the year 2000. But um, I, I actually take this opportunity as well to uh, pay tribute to her because it was actually her anniversary on Tuesday uh, there. But I, I was reminded of, as a family unit, caring for her, and we all had our different roles to make, whether that was uh, simply going over to make some uh, breakfast or lunch or, or, whatever, or whatever else. But I think yeah, I even thought, you know, myself and my brother as, as sort of teenagers at the time to my mum and dad uh, having, having more full roles. And, uh, I, you know, I was, I was kind of reminded of that. But also the casework, um, you know, that, that we deal with people coming in and out of the, the office disease, it's almost became as common, I don't know how other MSPs feel, for... Um, people to come in now with a carer, you know, as it is for them to come in individually, eh, whether that's at a surgery or coming into the, eh, to my local office eh, to meet with us. And, and inevitably, as you're chatting, eh, to focus people recognise, as well as dealing with the query they're maybe in to talk about, they talk about their own situations. And what's really struck me is the inconsistencies eh, in, you know, how, uh, how people are supported at their work. Some people say, you know, I'm really well supported here by my work, to, they know I'm a carer for you know, my aunt or my sister or whoever, and other people say, you know, no, we're, we're not very supported at all. Um, it's a real, been a real struggle to get here today. You know, eh, I've only got half an hour, I've only got 20 minutes. So I think that this is a really great eh, initiative that can maybe help if it, if it progresses to, eh, to deal with some of those um, inconsistencies here. Because as Tom pointed out, um, as Tom Arthur pointed out, it is as much about... Um, you know, supporting the individual and the organisation. So I think I think this is really good. Um, I want to also mention, uh, as Kezia Dugdale had done, just a, a particular uh, case. A um, person that actually came to my surgery um, very recently. Uh, they're caring for... Um, the, the, there are a couple who work in the same place and they're caring for uh, their wee boy who's got a lifelong condition. And I was absolutely shocked to hear that they're really struggling um, to get a shift pattern that, that, that would work for them both. Uh, they're, they're coming at a lot of difficulties with that and they're also um, even when they're needing time off that they're not getting you know paid leave this sort of just 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 various difficulties and I will get the the, the relevant information to the to the ministers uh, uh, to take that uh, possibly forward but um, I would just sort of ask of the, the minister and the Scottish government if they if they if they, they will commit to um, pursuing all sorts of organizations um, including ones maybe like the prison service, for example, who I didn't see on the, uh, the, the official list uh, to sign up to Carers Positive. as much for them to get support about how they are treating their employees as well as being able then to uh, treat employees who have got uh, significant care and, uh, responsibilities effectively. Um, and I will, I will leave it at that. And I, I thank you again, President Officer, uh, for letting me in and for Tom Arthur for bringing this debate to the Chamber. Um, a very good initiative. Thank you very much. <laughs> I now call Aileen Campbell to respond to the debate. Uh, around seven minutes, please, Minister. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And this has, as others have uh, uh, spoken about, been an important debate, not only for recognising our unpaid carers, but to help raise awareness of carer positive to employers right across Scotland, large and small. And I, like others, also thank Tom Arthur for bringing this debate forward and echo the words he used to describe Scotland's carers and paying rightful tribute to the irreplaceable and selfless dedication of uh, carers across Scotland and also uh, welcome Carers Scotland uh, to the Parliament and recognise the work they do to promote this uh, important uh, scheme and initiative, Carers Positive. And whilst caring for a loved one can be a positive and fulfilling experience, there are stresses uh, and uh, challenges that many carers face every day. Jeremy Balfour uh, and Fulton McGregor spoke with real uh, experience about how this can impact on people and families' lives. And likewise, from my own family experience, my mum relied heavily on the respite she got from Crossroads when she was caring uh, from, for my uh, granddad when we and my sister were both very young. And because of the value that we attach to the unstinting commitment carers have to the ones they love, this government is absolutely committed to enabling carers eh, to continue to care, if they wish to, in better health, but to also have a life alongside that caring role that they have. 
and we have invested around 136 million from 2007 through to 2017 uh, towards a number of programmes supporting adult carers and young carers with our partners in local authorities, health boards, the third sector and the national carer organisations. The views and experiences though of carers have also been crucial in helping to inform our programmes and initiatives. Most recently, they have helped to shape the new legislation that extends and enhances the rights of carers to support. Presiding officer, I want to take a moment to speak about the Carers Act, as there are important links, as speakers have already mentioned, to the intentions of the Carer Positive Scheme, which have been discussed today. And we brought forward the Carers Act, which takes effect uh, in April this year, to ensure that all of our carers can be better supported and they're able to realise their own personal outcomes. The new adult carer support plans and young carer statements will identify each carer's personal outcomes so that their eligible needs are supported. This may include their wishes to, for example, remain in work or undertake studies or training. Local authorities must also establish and maintain an information and advice service for carers. And there are a number of areas that this must cover, including income maximisation for carers and information about carers' rights. So it's clear to me that the outcomes being achieved through Carer Positive can complement the provisions in the Act. And I would encourage integration authorities to consider schemes like Carer Positive when undertaking their duties under uh, the new legislation. There are an estimated 788,000 carers in Scotland. 56% of carers aged 16 or over are also in employment or self-employment. In the authority of my own constituency, uh, this equates to around 18,300 carers who are also in work. And I've heard from some carers who struggle to look after their own health and well-being and as a consequence their loved ones well-being too. And the financial impact of reducing the hours that they work or giving work up altogether can be life-changing. Nationally around uh, 35,600 carers have reduced the number of hours that they work and around 22,600 have left work altogether. And with some of the unfairness of the social security system being delivered by the UK government, their situation can quickly become more challenging because we believe it is unfair that the support carers receive in the form of carers' allowance is the lowest of all working age benefits. And that is why we're increasing carers' allowance to the same level as job seekers' allowance from summer this year. Of course, supporting carers to balance work and caring responsibility helps to improve family finances. But there are other positive impacts of the carer positive scheme. As caring responsibilities increase in intensity, carers are at risk of becoming isolated. It can be difficult to maintain or foster social networks and pursue hobbies or interests. Being at work and amongst colleagues can be invaluable to a carer's health and well-being. Carer Positive is reducing socialisation and creating carer-friendly communities across the country. And it's clear that since its launch in June 2014, Carer Positive is making organisations just think and reflect more about what can be done to better support empl employees who are also carers. The Wait, yes. Maurice Corey. Right, uh, th I thank the Minister for taking the intervention. In, in my capacity as a chairman of the cross-party group for Armed Forces and Veterans Community, I think it's a very apt subject that we're discussing today and debating. Can I ask the Minister to consider the care support which the Armed Forces Veterans Organisations provide to veterans in Scotland? This can amount to some 200 cases per month for some of the larger veteran centres in Scotland. And it would be good if the Minister could consider these organisations under the Care a Positive Initiative. Aileen Campbell. Yes, I think you know there's always ways in which we want to enhance the, the offer through Carers Positive and you know if, you, if the member wants to write to me with some of the details of that I'm happy to kind of look at that and share that with uh, uh, Carers Scotland and others, uh, my officials as well about whether there and explore whether there are areas that we can make uh, improvements. Um, I am certainly, I'm certainly also encouraged that so far 90 employers have been recognised as being carer positive, covering around 295,000 uh, uh, employees in Scotland. But as Tom Arthur and Kesey Dugdale rightly noted, there is clearly much more that we still need to do. Um, the list of employees who, uh, employers who are carer positive also includes the Scottish Parliament, Scottish Government, third sector, public and private sector organisations. And as members may be aware, I recently wrote to all Scottish public bodies to encourage them to participate in this scheme. I think I also wrote to MSPs in November, so apologies to the members who this has come uh, left field if they didn't receive that. Uh, but certainly happy as well from my perspective to ensure that we can pass on any uh, knowledge and information to, to any members who wish to sign up. And certainly my officials, uh, in response to Jamie Halcrow-Smith's uh, uh, points, my officials are also working across government, uh, Johnson, sorry, John Johnson, to, um, 
<laughs> to work on a cross government to look to engage and establish better links uh, with the chambers of commerce and making sure that we uh, up the number of private uh, companies who are uh, embracing carer positive. But I would also like to congratulate uh, Tom Arthur uh, as the trendsetter for this, alongside Graham Day, but also uh, my ministerial colleagues, Jean Freeman and Marie Todd, who have been recognised as being carer positive employers. And as I've also done, I hope that members across the parliament visit the carer positive website and apply to participate in this important scheme. Um, Carer Positive is not only, though, however, benefiting carers. And as Graeme Day uh, described, those organisations who have taken steps to become Carer Positive recognise the business case for supporting staff to remain in post, retain their skill and experience, and that can reduce staff turnover and associated recruitment and training costs. Inclusive growth is a key element of this government's economic strategy and will support and encourage employers to maximise the benefits which come with treating workers fairly. And it is right, as Kezia Dugdale did, to set carers positive within the context of fair work practices. And we are committed to driving up employment standards. This is why we launched the Scottish Business Pledge and appointed an independent fair work convention who published their framework in 2016. And despite employment law being a reserve matter, the Pro Procurement Reform Scotland Act 2014 enabled this government to publish statutory guidance on addressing fair work practices in procurement in October 2015. And this makes clear that a positive approach to fair work practices can help improve the quality of services, goods and works. Public bodies must now consider before undertaking a procurement exercise whether it is relevant and proportionate to include a question on fair work practices, including things like the living wage, which can be evaluated as part of the competition. And Carer Positive is contributing to this positive uh, approach. So I would like to conclude again, by, as others have, to thank Carer, Scot Carer Scotland for their hard work and uh, development of Carer Positive. And I hope that employers across all sectors in Scotland take steps to become carer positive and will continue to work closely with Carer Scotland to explore how best to increase take up of the scheme and how to support existing carer positive employers. And I'm grateful to all MSPs for their commitment to do what they can to promote this initiative. And finally, presiding officer, I would also like to thank Tom Arthur for bringing forward this motion and for his clear passion for making a difference in this important issue. Thank you. That concludes the debate and the meeting is suspended until 2.30pm.